Hey, Facebook world. So I get this question, I get this question a lot over the years. Last month was 20 years since I've been in this crazy business, mortgage business. So it comes up a lot is, okay, you know, what should I do on a day-to-day -day basis so I could be successful? And believe me, I've, I've made so many mistakes, okay? Made so many mistakes, made uh, so many bad choices, uh, didn't learn from some of the mistakes and eventually didn't learn from them. So let me take you back Let's go down memory lane, not so great memory lane of what happened. Uh, so I got in the business ba basically in uh, 2002. Um, and obviously got into it, didn't really know anything. It was a different world back then. You had so many other programs out there. You didn't have to verify income, all this other stuff. Took off like a rocket because my previous job, I worked about seven days a week, not about, I did. Uh, took very little time off over a seven year period. I was miserable, hated it. It was a completely different field. Um, and so forth. I, but I learned a ton from that and I learned what you need to do to be successful. Now, some of those things carried over, but not early on into the mortgage uh, world. Okay. So going from 2002, 2007, one of the gangbusters made almost uh, seven figures um, at that point and everything was going great. I thought, Hey, this is, this is, you know, as long as I work hard, everything's going to be great. Uh, I'm going to have nothing to worry about. Um, and then we all know what happened, right? The mortgage crash, I had 20 plus homes, uh, you know, went through a financial crisis. It was a complete nightmare, absolute nightmare going through. Pretty much had to start from scratch, okay? So it took, uh, in about 2000, I think it was 2010, 2009, somewhere around there, I took about nine months off trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Because the mortgage industry, you gotta remember, was constantly changing. Uh, guidelines. I would take somebody out to lunch, like a realtor, and say, hey, listen, we could do this for you. Then by the time I got back from lunch, things would change. I couldn't even handle that anymore. It was just so, so uh, frustrating, and uh, it was it was just terrible. So basically, I took about nine months off and came back into the industry because I really didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew I, I could do that, but I had to do it different. I had to do much different. And that's when I started getting business coaching. Um, I was the first seven of the Freedom Club. If you ever look up the Freedom Club, it's Carl White. He's one of the best known coaches out there by far. Uh, and we were the original seven of his Freedom Club, which is massive right now. They're having a big thing, I think, in Nashville right now, where it's just filled up to the max. Um, but the, the, the way I got into that, actually, um, was, was through video, because they were taking applications and you know type in your story and send it in. I'm like, you know, the only way I'm gonna get this is to be different. And that's what I did. I, I did a video, got in there, told them my story, how we went through financial crisis and, and worked through it. And, and coming out the other end, told them everything on that, and I got in, okay? So the moral of that part of my story is you gotta be different. And that's how I've always looked at my, you know, at my business. And you know, anybody who knows me, has watched me, we don't, I don't usually follow the herd. I don't do the Monday phone calls like, like everybody else. And there's nothing wrong with that. I have great friends who are all across the nation right now, great mortgage people, phenomenal mortgage people who do that. But I said, you know what? If I was a realtor, I don't wanna be taking a phone call every single Monday. Because after the second Monday, I say, don't ever call me again. I never want to talk to you and be done with it. So I knew I had to be different because, hey, you know, if, if I did that and I just did that, I, I didn't like it. I, I don't want to do it. I wasn't scared of doing it. I could do it all day long, but it, I was miserable. But I knew my time in the business would not be long. So in that phase, that was the first thing that I said, okay, I've got to be different. Okay, because how I did business before the crash is completely different now. Completely different, a completely different world. Anybody who went through all that understands exactly what I'm talking about. So did that, um, got into the Freedom Club, and I knew when I got back into the mortgage business after taking nine months off, I had to uh, do things different, like I said, but I also had to get business coaching and mentoring. And that's when that came in. Um, and, and getting that from Carl White and his group and everything else and learning through all that, hey, you know, do not look at this, and this is what a lot of mistakes that realtors and mortgage people you know, make. They think they have to be the customer service agent. So let me explain that without being um, mean about it. I'm just being honest. Basically, they think they have to take all the phone calls, they have to respond to every message, they have to do all this, and, and so forth. But yet, on the other side of the mouth, they say, hey, listen, this is the most important decision uh, that, that people make. Well, you're not treating like that because if you went to an attorney's office, if you went to a doctor's office or anybody else's office, who do you talk to when you first walk in? You don't talk to the doctor. Sometimes you don't even talk to the doctor at all. You talk to the admin person. Then the admin person talks to the nurse. And then you talk to the nurse. Then the nurse comes in, you talk to them. And a lot of times that's where it ends. Or sometimes the doctor comes in in, what, 10 minutes or so? And then that's it. 
So if we are dealing with the most important financial decision that we all believe that we are, because it's true, then we have to act like it. You can't act like customer service agents on a Discover Card commercial, you know, talking with the headset and, just, and, that's, and that's all you're doing all day long is, is, is redirecting, playing ping pong conversations when you have to, when you can easily set up systems where it makes it easier for people to get quicker answers, not by you, but by the system that you set up. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, there's a lot more details that go into that thought. So going forward, uh, you know, I got to the point, got coaching, started building a team, absolutely was atrocious as a leader. It was horrible. I, I did a horrible job, hired the wrong people. I, I was a horrible leader, you know, teacher, all that stuff, right? So I had to tear it all down. We had about 12 people. I had to tear it all down. And then we had to start putting brick by brick by brick by brick and start building it up. And that's what we've been doing the last six, six years or so, six, uh, almost seven years, is really finding the right people. And we've got amazing people right now. I mean, what we do is not okay, you know, it's not all me. This is, it's impossible. You know, anybody who knows that or knows business knows that it's not just one person. It's the people that you have in, in, you know, I had to get better at finding those people, but I also had to be better at being a leader because I was absolutely atrocious. So you start learning through this and voila, it's 20 years later. And, and that's what happens. If you talk to any successful person who's been successful, they've been through all that stuff. They've been through the peaks and valleys and, you know, get into the peak and say, oh, this is the way it's supposed to be. And then boom, everything hits and they bottom out. They've been through all that. The key is to learn from that. And you're going to constantly learn until your last dying breath. But you have to constantly learn and find the right people and learn as yourself how to how to deal with with, with uh, different different circumstances. So there's a great book that I read called The Ideal Team Leader. I highly recommend anybody who's looking to build a team or build a business get this. It's about this skinny, if not less than that. And it, it really clarified who we wanted on the team, okay? We want humble people. It gives you three points. Humble, hungry, and smart, okay? Humble, meaning coachable. Hungry, meaning obviously hungry, you know, basically trying to constantly improve, trying to, you know, trying to grow and so forth. And smart, not just being smart, but smart with people and, and situations, okay? There's a lot of people who are smart, but they don't know how to deal with, 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 with different circumstances. So for an example, if somebody is, uh, you know, trying to, trying to deal with something and so forth, does that require a phone call, text, or email? You have to know that because you'll be on the phone 24 seven about stuff that's not your highest payoff activities. So if it's not gonna be you, who's it gonna be? And how do you set that up? How do you set up that communication? Okay, there's a lot of times where loan officers say, yeah, I definitely wanna do this and this and that, but they would never leverage their time whatsoever because they feel they have to be the one person to do everything. Once again, getting back to the customer service agent, um, you know, kind of, kind of like mental at, you know, attitude. Basically, you're gonna have to find systems uh, and, and really put those in place. And, and that's, that takes time because here's, the th here's what happens. Okay, that sounds great. We got the roadmap. Everything looks great. Perfect, right? You hire somebody. Going good for 90 days, 120 days. All of a sudden, boom, starts falling off. Whether it's them, you, or combination of both. Now, you put all that time into it. You put all that sweat into it. You put all that money into it. And then all of a sudden, it doesn't work out. Right? So now, what, what do most people do? They tear down the whole system. They said, no, I can't do it. I can't offload that. Doesn't work. And this time, meanwhile, it was their fault all along because they hired the wrong person or they didn't groom the person the right way. They didn't check in the right way. And I made all these mistakes, by the way, like I said earlier. But you have to, if you want some freedom and to grow your business, okay, and be successful, you're going to have to put these pieces in place unless you're going to be the one person. I know in my field, you probably do three or four loans uh, and handling everything by yourself, not delegating anything, and then you're done. You're toast. So the, the biggest issue I see with realtors and mortgage people is that they don't look at it as a business. Uh, they don't have a business mentality. They look at it as salespeople. And that's it. That's where they stop. They, they brag about how good they are converting and they stay at that level. And, and let's be honest, but nobody really stays at the same level. They usually go this way, right? Because unless you push and push and push and push it, um, then, then it's impossible to grow. Okay, the natural thing that happens to people when they stay here, they fall down. Okay, 
because people get lazy, people get comfort. I've been there, happens. It's a, it's a daily type of mental thing, by the way. It's not something where, hey, okay, I arrived, I don't, I don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. No, it creeps in. Anytime you have some, some success, that stuff's gonna creep in. You're gonna have to understand, if you wanna be successful and you wanna leverage your time, you're gonna have to hire people and you're gonna have to learn through the mistakes and through people backstabbing you and, and you know, learning through your own mistakes or screwing, you know, screwing it up and, and so forth, but that doesn't take away the right way to go, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. I know some people are gonna understand this, some people are not, but how we have set it up here is that we have communication systems where we over-communicate. And all that over-communication, I mean, I mean a lot. I mean, we have updates throughout the loan process. We have, hey, this is a number to call and text. When you do that, three people are going to jump on it right away. We have all this stuff, and I'm just giving you snippets of it. We have a lot of other stuff that, that goes on where we're over-communicating, loving on the clients and everything else. And very little of that is happening with me. It's, it's the systems that we built to make sure the customer is taken care of because we know that one person or two person or two people cannot do that and cannot give the quality of, of attention that, that's needed. Once again, I'm gonna go back to it. If you believe what we do is the most important decision, okay, whether it's mortgage or real estate, okay, you better act like it, okay, because some people are, are acting like it and they're gonna take market share, okay? Hopefully that helps. Get any questions on that, let me know and just comment down below or shoot me a private message, okay? Have a great day. Talk to you soon.